In LA this week, labor leaders and one city councilman throwing their full support behind a state-sponsored retirement plan, one that's expected to give millions of California seniors enough money once they stop working. I'm Gil Reyes with a story next. I'm Anna Marcos. Much of the popular Runyon Canyon will be off limits for the next few months due to a pipeline construction. That story coming up. Trailblazers by air and by land. Three African-American women, leaders in the transportation sector, being honored at the ceremony in downtown L.A. The story up next. Hello and welcome to L.A. This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yana Kay. A UC Berkeley study shows Latinos, Asians, and women are among the fastest growing groups of senior citizens. They're also the least financially ready for retirement. As Gil Reyes reports, California is putting the finishing touches on a state-sponsored retirement strategy to help them. A state-sponsored retirement plan expected to kick in next year could benefit low-wage workers like Tanya McMillan. I have no retirement plan. Um, after working a 60-hour week and at the end of the day, I make about $4.98 an hour. I just cannot afford to have any extra money to put away for my future. That's why she's all for the Secure Choice Retirement Act passed in 2012. It requires employers that do not offer retirement plans to enroll workers in a savings account headed by the state. Workers can opt out if they choose, but it's money for retirement. Independent contractors can also take part. This news conference outside Ronald Reagan State Building in downtown brings to light a harsh reality. Though the nation's senior population is expected to grow by two-thirds over the next 20 years, many of those seniors won't have access to significant retirement savings. Making matters worse here in California is the lack of 401k opportunities. Certainly this is another option for nearly 7 million Californians. Uh, to, to have a decent retirement. An advisory board is trying to determine the best way to launch Secure Choice in 2017. City Councilman Paul Koretz wants a pooled IRA system, one that shares market risk among many workers. Well, it's designed to reduce the volatility and have the money be shared across a huge pool of, of retirees and of different ages. Workers would deposit 3% of their earnings to the state every year. Upon retirement, they could receive 30% of their income for life. I can afford it and it just gives me a little bit more to look forward to. A little something extra in the nest egg. In downtown LA, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Monthly payments to retirees could arrive in addition to Social Security and other benefits. Well, it's an opportunity for Angelinos to receive direct help and take advantage of some services offered through the city attorney's office. Rasha Goel has more on a program that's helping the city's justice system branch out to the community. Today we're focused on our dispute resolution program, which brings members of the community who volunteer in our office together with those who are confronting disputes and resolves them in an amicable way. Neighbor to neighbor, complainant with police officer, tenant and landlord. At this dispute resolution event, LA City Attorney Mike Fuhrer wants you to take advantage of mediation services before taking matters into your own hands. It's part of a community justice initiative program to highlight alternative options to help solve disputes. These mediation services are offered at no cost. Each one of these disputes can develop into a, a, a physical altercation, which becomes a criminal matter. And we are helping uh, through our community service a mediation to resolve small future arguments. Essentially, it's a way to use the justice system to transform the neighborhoods and prevent confrontations from escalating, especially those between the police and the communities they patrol. Well, I would have to say that south of the 10, especially the south central south LA areas, are primarily the more volatile for aggression toward police officers within the LAPD. 
Officials say it takes a partnership and collaborative effort among various community and law enforcement agencies to promote these services. In the room today are members from of the city attorney's office, from the fire department, from the police department, volunteers in our dispute resolution program, nonprofit organizations, community activists. We're all convening together. Officials say there are a variety of reasons why Angelinos may want to consider mediation through the city attorney's office. No costly attorney fees or court expenses. Neutral mediator helps with negotiation. Mediation takes place outside the overcrowded court system. And the goal? A mutually acceptable resolution for all parties. And even more help is on the way. Community Justice Initiative will host day-long events regarding other relevant issues over the next few months. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. For more information on the Dispute Resolution Program, you can log on to LACityAttorney.org or you can call 213-978-1880. A favorite LA landmark for nature and fitness enthusiasts is going off the grid for months as city leaders launch the Runyon Canyon Water System Improvement Project. And Marcos gets some reaction from the locals. It's one of the more scenic, popular and accessible LA parks friendly to both dogs and people. But starting in April, the park will be a lot less welcoming for visitors. All the trails in most areas will close down as city workers begin a water improvement project to help with flood and fire control. It's kind of like a L.A. landmark, you know, it's almost like closing the beaches for the summer, so it's, it's a shock for sure. One mile of pipe which runs through the park will have to be replaced. A few months ago, we actually had a water pipe burst in Appian Way in Laurel Canyon, just up the hill. And not only did it create a big sinkhole in the middle of the road, but the water traveled down and destroyed two homes. This one mile length of pipeline be below Runyon Canyon already has 17 to 35 identifiable leaks. So that's when I say it's a disaster waiting to happen. It's kind of got to be done. We'll just probably end up going to Griffith. One good piece of news for those who use the park, the yoga field near the entrance will remain open during construction. But you do know the yoga will stay open. That's a positive, but I like to run the mountain. So I'm, I'm bummed, definitely. I'm not too much of a yoga person. My girlfriend is, but that's not really my thing. Besides improving water quality and fire protection, city workers hope to repave the entire trail and put in a stormwater collection system. When we're done, we want to make sure that the project, the park that we leave behind is in better shape and looks better than the park that's here right now. It makes me kind of sad. It's kind of crazy. We come up here three times a week, probably. The park reopens in July. In the meantime, a little yoga bliss just might help fight those Runyon Canyon blues. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The Pipe Project is a team effort by the LADWP and the Department of Recreation and Parks. Another piece in the Metro Light Rail Network falls into place as city and county leaders open the Gold Line Rail Extension, which will take riders deep into the San Gabriel Valley. And Marcos hops on for the ride. LA's Metro is opening the doors to a whole new way of commuting through more of LA County. So today, Arcadia, Monrovia, Duarte, Irvindale, and Azusa join Metro's transit revolution. That's why we're here today. City leaders hopped on board at the grand opening of the Metro Gold Line extension, which now links the San Gabriel Valley to LA's light rail transportation network. The 11 and a half mile extension makes the Gold Line the longest light rail route at 31 miles, and it covers stops from LA's Union Station through Pasadena all the way to Azusa, a total of 27 stops. It means less congestion as we're going, and I'm excited to be here today with my daughter. We're gonna ride the first train make a little bit of history. I think it's fantastic. Just like most people, the 210, it's become a parking lot. And there's even better news. Regional and city leaders hope to get funding for an extra extension even further into the Inland Empire. That is now in the design stages. Are we going to stop in Azusa? No. Are we going to go at least to Claremont? Yeah. Are we going to go to Ontario? Yeah. Mayor Eric Garcetti says the extension will be good not only for San Gabriel Valley residents, but for all Angelinos. 
We want to come in here. We want to use Ontario as an airport, not just LAX. We want to see a vibrant region that eases congestion for everybody. This is definitely a greener alternative than the 210 freeway. This extension becomes the first rail line paid for with Measure R transportation funds to open to the public. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. And city leaders in May will open a new rail line all the way to Santa Monica as well. Well, three African-American women were honored for blazing a trail in L.A.'s transportation infrastructure. Gil Reyes has more on their achievements at a special breakfast in downtown. Two by land, one by air. Black female standouts in the field of public transit discuss inspiration during African-American History Month. I think about people like Bessie Coleman, uh, and Bessie was the first female aviator, but also African-American female aviator in the country. And she went to France and learned how to speak French in order to get her pilot's license because she couldn't do that in the U.S. Uh, so I think she's a testament to perseverance. Perseverance, also a quality found in Los Angeles World Airport's executive director, Deborah Flint. Flint, who's helping to reinvent LAX with an ambitious $8.5 billion renovation, is honored at this breakfast in downtown LA. LA. Also honored, Long Beach Transit Deputy Chief Deborah Johnson. Johnson, who's working to expand Long Beach's electric bus fleet to reduce pollution, says networking is key to her success. Know what's going on, um, having the opportunity to interface with those in the community, because oftentimes if you stay within your own certain area, one may not be as knowledgeable and adept at what's going on. African-American women paving the way for improved mass transit. Over at LA Metro, where five major rail projects are underway, Metro Deputy Chief and Honoree Stephanie Wiggins says mentors paved the way for her success. Um, here at Metro, I've been fortunate to be mentored by our chair, Mark Ridley Thomas, our board member, Jackie Dupont Walker, even Supervisor Solis, in the short time that she's been on the Board of Supervisors has proven to be a mentor. So mentors come in all shapes and sizes, and um, they're truly a blessing. In the careers of female transportation trailblazers. In downtown L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. All three honorees want to see more opportunities for women and small businesses to improve mass transit in L.A. County. Well, the Aliso Canyon gas leak has gone down as one of the worst gas spills in California history. The leaking gas well, which started near Porter Ranch last October, was plugged several weeks ago. But as Anna Marcos reports, the leak has left a dirty problem in its wake. Anna. Yana, the Aliso Canyon gas leak may be capped, but the problems are far from over. This park, Holly Burnson Park, is now closed to media and residents alike as crews work to clean up an oily residue left by the leak. How can you breathe in motor oil and think that that's okay? The oily brown spots have appeared on the outside of homes, and now residents returning to Porter Ranch after months of living in hotels have discovered that parks where their children play are also contaminated. Cleaning crews with face masks are cleaning up the mess at the Holly Burnson Park. The Aliso Canyon gas leak lasted four months and caused the relocation of thousands of families. So you don't feel safe enough to return to your home yet? No, I do not. We do not know what was in the gas. It is a proprietary trade secret. The oil residue problem started back in December. We were attempting to um, stop the leak by, um, by pumping liquids directly down the leaking well, which didn't work too well, as you might recall. And uh, so there was some blowback of, of material. Residents complained about the residue then, but say the gas company did nothing until community members discovered residue at the park and complained to the parks department. I thought the county had given it a clean bill of health. The county had given a clean bill of health, and the county did not want to come back out to re-examine it until Parks Department demanded they do so with the pushing of the local residents. But the kids are playing on that stuff. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, public health says don't touch it. We agree. Uh, you know, it's 
It's not going to kill you. But officials monitoring the air for methane, benzene, and other chemicals disagree. They say long-term health effects are still unknown, and they're still trying to figure out what exactly was in the gas leak. Even now that the well is plugged, they say methane levels at times rise to three times the normal levels. We've never seen anything even remotely like this. Is it catastrophic? With the oh, yeah. They send these stupid flyers out every week and, say, and they say safety's our priority. That's their motto. What a joke. What a joke. Well, the good part of this story is people from Porter Ranch are starting to come home, and that's a good thing. I'm not asking for anything monetary. I'm just saying clean up your mess. SoCal gas officials will also visit 140 homes to check out complaints of oily residue there. And other parks are also scheduled for cleaning. Meanwhile, the Holly Burnson Park remains closed until further notice. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Anyone wanting to report oily residue on their property can visit alisoupdates.com. Well, a new report says Los Angeles World Airport still has a long way to go to improve the passenger experience. City officials hope an online tool makes it easier for immigrants in L.A. to become U.S. citizens and a Sun Valley family rises above the ashes. All these stories in City B. L.A. World Airports, the city-owned entity that operates LAX, still has significant work to do to address impending traffic jams in and around the terminals, to upgrade passenger experiences, and to improve airport business practices. That's according to a report issued by L.A. City Controller Ron Galperin. Consultants warn that the $5 billion modernization program to overhaul Terminal 2 plans to add a consolidated rental car facility and link the whole airport to a new metro station via 2.2-mile automatic people mover will greatly increase traffic and reduce parking in LAX's central terminal area during construction. Issues that Lawa has not sufficiently identified or adequately addressed, Galperin said. Mayor Eric Garcetti recently announced a new program with the Los Angeles Public Library to help immigrant Angelinos apply for American citizenship. Citizenship Works 2.0 is a website and mobile app designed to give lawful permanent residents step-by-step -step instructions as they guide through their naturalization applications. The new pilot program is part of the Mayor's Step Forward LA initiative, which focuses on encouraging more than 350,000 legal permanent resident immigrants in L.A. to become U.S. citizens. Four library branches have teamed up with the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs to dedicate space, train staff, computers and other resources to assist with the use of Citizenship Works 2.0. This pilot builds on the resources already available in Citizenship Corners located in all 73 library branches, where residents can access tools, sample test materials, instructional DVDs and more. What a better place than the public library in a community to uh, welcome new Americans in and to uh, provide information and answers to questions that they have. Elected officials and community members helped celebrate the grand opening of the Centro Batanero Mazatlan restaurant in Sun Valley. The opening comes in a space next door to another restaurant by the same owner that was gutted by arsonists several months ago. Now the owners decided to rebuild and create a new business, providing employment for many of its displaced workers. The restaurant owner said he was able to push forward thanks to the community and Council District 6. Being uh, that we have the support of the community and, and our local politicians, is, it gives us the, the fuel uh, to, to come back. The councilwoman uh, makes that one of her main priorities is to make sure that businesses are taken care of, whether it's through supporting them and getting small loans or to support them and getting their feet off the ground. Renewable energy is helping former felons renew their lives. As Gil Reyes reports, the future looks bright when harnessing the sun. A solar panel installation program is providing second chances to people like David Andrade. Andrade had spent nine years behind bars. I just told myself that after doing all that time, I grew up in there, I, I want a career. I want a job, I want to stay out of trouble, and I want a family. Um, a friend told me about Homeboy Industries, so did a family member, so I decided to come down, I checked them out. For more than 25 years, Homeboy Industries has helped former gangbangers re-enter the workforce. Its founder, Father Greg Boyle, has helped put people to work through the Homeboy Bakery, Homegirl Cafe, 
also the Homeboy Solar Panel Installation Training Program. The big announcement today, more than 100 former felons have been chosen for installation training this year, thanks in part to a $100,000 grant from AT&T. As a uh, former LAPD officer, now reserve officer, I understand that it's vital for former offenders to have good opportunities. Rarely did I ever arrest an individual who had a good paying job. And so for each one of you who has had the strength to turn around your life, know that at City Hall we promise to be there with you every step of the way. And also to collaborate with groups like Homeboy uh, and others who are making uh, these changes possible, finding training, uh, providing employment opportunities. Last year, more than 80 people graduated from training at East Los Angeles Skills Center before landing good paying jobs. Andrade has a job too. As assistant program coordinator for the solar panel installation program, he helps trainees find the confidence to succeed. In Chinatown, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The program has trained more than 500 people in solar panel installation over the past decade. Well, a trip to the zoo doesn't get more up close and personal than this. Kids at the LA Zoo got treated to a new type of touchy-feely experience, the hippo encounter. Anna Marcos takes us there. This mouth-gaping first encounter with a hippo would be enough to make anyone think twice about getting closer. But the kids are game as they take part in the LA Zoo's new hippo encounter, a hands-on behind-the-scenes experience where you get to watch the creatures eat, learn about them, touch them, and get very up close and personal indeed. I've touched different kinds of animals before, like furry, scaly, um, but I've never touched like bumpy and hard before. The sweat, I didn't really want to touch that. I thought it was a little gross. They have a special sweat that they secrete that keeps them moist when they come out of the water. Um, it protects their skin. It also has some healing properties in it. The two hippos here are baby Rosie, who was born one and a half years ago, weighing 60 pounds. She now weighs more than 1,100 pounds. And close by is Mama Mara, a 3,500-pound giant. People really enjoy it. They have a great time. They're actually surprised and shocked at how um, big they are and how friendly they are up close. Well, it seems a safe bet that a friendly hippo is better than an unfriendly one. Kids big and small came away with more confidence and more insight when it comes to befriending the world's third largest land mammal. But oops, there's the gaping jaw again. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The hippo encounter happens at the LA Zoo every Saturday and Sunday at noon. Tickets are $15 and that's on top of the zoo's regular admission. And it's better to make reservations ahead of time. While commuters at Union Station are being transported, not only to their destination, but to a zen-like environment that calms the soul. The smooth sound of the horn echoes through downtown's majestic Union Station, uplifting the spirit of daily commuters and giving them an opportunity to relax and unwind. The calming ambiance is part of a month-long series put on by online radio station Dublab and Metro Art. We wanted to simply offer this a uh, brief inspiration for some passing by and for others to sit down and enjoy the music. Music for train stations was inspired by Music for Airports, a collection of ambient sound created by Brian Eno, a musician who spent anxious and boring hours waiting for flights. He created the music to help soothe his nerves, and now his creation is helping soothe the nerves of other travelers. And the series is about adding a more relaxing environment to what is a kind of stressful environment, which is a train station where people are rushing around from place to place. And uh, so we're adding this layer of sound that's a little bit different than what you would hear on a normal day. 
The series, which features a DJ and a live musical performance, is both an homage to Eno and a contemporary interpretation of his concept applied within the architectural splendor of Union Station. The idea of music for train stations is music that blends in the background, music that uh, it's uh, made more to uh, break uh, the stresses, the, the anxieties of traveling, of being in a rush, meeting a deadline, getting to a place on time. A musical departure for both travelers and visitors alike. The music plays from 4 to 6 p.m. every Friday in March. Well, it's your last chance to see the work of an iconic architect up close, celebrating the life of a female pioneer during Women's History Month and enjoying the classical sounds of German composer Johann Sebastian Bach during your commute. All this in this week's Things to Do. Frank Gehry's iconic architecture has transformed cityscapes all over the world, our own included thanks to Walt Disney Concert Hall. LACMA is honoring the LA-based architect with a career-spanning retrospective. Though Gehry's creativity seems so effortless, the Simpsons lampooned his design process as simply crumpling up a piece of paper. There's actually a considerable amount of technology behind his works. The exhibition focuses on the development of these digital design and fabrication programs, along with the architect's relationship with urbanism. The exhibit comes to a close on March 20th, so don't miss out. For more, visit LACMA.org. March is Women's History Month, and this year's theme is Women Inspiring Innovation Through Imagination, celebrating women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Visit the North Hollywood Amelia Earhart Branch Library and pay tribute to Amelia Earhart, the famous female aviator after which the branch was renamed, who lived in Toluca Lake in the years prior to her disappearance. Earhart flew alone across the Atlantic, the first female to do so. She also helped form an organization for female pilots, counseled women at universities on career paths, and was a supporter of equal rights for women. She vanished in the Pacific Ocean in 1937 while attempting to fly around the world. The North Hollywood Library is located at 5211 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood. As far as obscure holidays go, this one is arguably the most sophisticated. Founded by cellist Dale Henderson under the streets of New York City, Bach and the Subways Day takes place annually on the birthday of German composer Johann Sebastian Bach, to bring public enthusiasm to the beautiful and increasingly forgotten art of classical music. On March 21st, as well as the previous two days, soundtrack your commute with free performances throughout Union Station, train platforms and other public spaces with everything from an organ recital to a flute choir. Visit BachInTheSubways.org for performance details and locations. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.